I'm just happy to bring it back to Indianapolis. Game three is going to be one of the most amazing films. It gets pretty rowdy in there, so we're going to need that. But the whole state is, is, is tuned into the game. Uh, and everybody, you know, cheering you on. And the vibe is different, the buzz is different. It's like every possession counts, every bucket is big. It's just a, it's a whole new thing. It's amazing. During the season, it's great, but when the playoffs start, it's like, man. We need our fans to come out and support us, and we need our fans to come out and you know, be our six men. We got, you know, the best fans in the world, and we're going to continue to need them. The, the arena's going to be hype, and uh, I just can't wait till, till the game starts. Victor Oladipo had connected on that wide-open three-pointer in Game 2. Might we be talking about a 2-0 lead for the Blue and Gold? Perhaps. Regardless, 1-1 is not bad. It doesn't get much better than spring in Indiana. Playoffs in the capital of the state that throws basketball. Thaddeus Young, Boyan Bogdanovich, Miles Turner reporting for duty. We even saw sunshine today. And sunny would be a good way to describe the feelings of Pacers fans as this playoff series shifts to Indianapolis. Indiana has wrestled home court advantage away from Cleveland. Now it is time to take advantage of the best playoff atmosphere in the NBA. A gold out for Game 3. The statement jerseys will be worn once again, and we cannot wait. Jeremiah Johnson joined once again by Eddie Gill. We are happy to be home from Cleveland after five days and four nights in Ohio. In Games 1 and 2, many are saying the Pacers were the best team. Do you agree? Uh, I would agree with the fact that they played a really solid eight quarters there. Uh, I would say seven quarters, you can say. That, that first quarter, LeBron James absolutely lost his mind. They were able to shoot the three ball the way they've been shooting. That's the Cavaliers I'm referring to. But overall, I think that the Pacers can take some, some great things from, the, from games one and two. Thought they played solid defense in both games. Thought they moved the ball well in both games. Took advantage of their opportunities to attack the basket. I think that's where their bread will be buttered throughout this entire series. The, the Cavs are susceptible to layups and giving them up. I think if they continue to do that, do not settle for jump shots, but also got to be focused on those three-point shooters of the Cavaliers. Don't let them get loose. Looking for a little more offense tonight from the blue and gold. And we know what an advantage this crowd has been over the years in the regular season. The Pacers have a winning record at home in 29 straight seasons, but time to turn up the volume for playoff basketball. That is our first topic tonight. Darren Collison called the series a chess match. It's Indiana's turn to counter Cleveland's move. Is there an adjustment that can be made to contain LeBron James will answer that question and Victor Oladipo has shown his regular season success can carry over into the postseason what does the all-star guard need to do in game three I'll ask Eddie Gill our Penske promise three things you need to know the Pacers points in the paint 50 per game tied for fourth among the 16 playoff teams you see Miles Turner's scoring average this is after scoring just 14 combined points in the final four games of the regular season and the Pacers with a third best home record in the Eastern Conference Conference since January 1st, trying to build on that tonight. Now, there have been so many memorable playoff games with the Pacers against LeBron James over the years. Indiana 5-6 and six in those matchups, trying to even that mark, but in terms of a home court advantage, this is certainly one. You see some of the numbers this season. I want you to look at points off of turnovers. That's been key all season. 18.6 here at the Fieldhouse and field goal percentage. The Pacers are 13-0 at home since January 1st when they shoot at least 50% from the field. In the playoffs, can this be a difference maker the home court? Oh, absolutely. That's why everyone fights for it throughout the regular season. They would love to have that home advantage. Most teams have a better record there, and the Pacers are no different. They do a phenomenal job, at, as you said, in transition, getting those points off of turnovers. The activity is fantastic with deflections and steals. I think the home crowd just completely uplifts them when they do make one or two plays. It just goes to another level. The entire team is motivated. The entire team is energized by that energy that's in the building. It is important not to assume just because you are at home, you are going to win the game, but there is no doubt out. The players, especially Lance Stevenson, look forward to tonight's atmosphere. I feel like all the IU fans, everybody come together and want, as one. And even the Butler fans, they come in as one and they cheer for us and make us go hard and, and uh, make us want to go out there and win for them. So, I mean, the, the arena's going to be 
hyped, and uh, I just can't wait till, till the game starts. I wanted to let them know we're not done yet and we need their help, and uh, we believe we can win. We're not just going into this series thinking we can't or trying to just fit in or keep it close. We, we're trying to win. Eddie, we all remember the playoff games against the Cavs here last season. A 26-point lead blown in Game 3. Paul George missed the final shot in Game 4. LeBron James was such a big part of those games. A big reason Cleveland won Game 2. How do you contain the GOAT? Yeah, he's obviously the, the focal point of that team and every team that he's on historically. If you look at a couple plays here, you can't lose track of him and commit too many players away from him. This time they, they lose him. He steps into a walk-up three. This is after him making three or four consecutive shots, so you know he's in a rhythm here. This time, Bogey gets caught ball watching. There's a back door here. You cannot lose, you lose focus of the best player on the floor and the, arguably the best player in our game right now. Certainly some breakdowns in game two that Nate McMillan and company are hoping to fix. 46-12-5 and five, his stat line on Wednesday night, and you see the guys that have been able to do that in the playoffs three times all time from LeBron James impressive list LeBron James certainly was assertive to start off game two maybe a little bit passive in game one the players watched a lot of film talked in practice they're ready to try to contain LeBron tonight we, we definitely got to contain him I mean if he has to go out there and score 50 every night I mean it's gonna it puts us in a and you know in a position where you know we got to kind of for the one slow him down and two um, you know just go right back at him so um, I think we're confident I mean just LeBron going one-on-one -on -one, um, and us not a being in our help or in our gap to kind of help whoever's guarding LeBron because you know we're worried about sh the shooters yeah, that's that's what that, that's why they did that lineup you know what I mean? but we'll be prepared we'll be ready you know we got we got a game plan up our sleeves sounds good Darren Collins and he referenced that new starting lineup these are the five that Teron Lou trotted out there for game two. First time this group had started all season the small Cavs lineup Eddie what impact did that have on the outcome on Wednesday. I think it had a huge impact. You look at that lineup. There are four guys outside of LeBron James that can shoot the three ball at a very high percentage there. So you kind of pick your poison. Are you giving that up in, in terms of letting LeBron deal with two and three defenders and letting those three point shooters shoot the ball or are you going to let LeBron play one on one let him go get 40 or 50 and hold those other guys below double digits. Of course George Hill in that starting lineup both games one and two will be interesting to watch George Hill tonight the Indianapolis native now the Pacers have a few X factors that have really yet to have that breakout game in this series speaking of Boyan Bogdanovich and DeMontis Sabonis one starts one's come off the bench both have been key to this team's success during the regular season noticing anything offensively from these two yeah I'd really like to see bogey really get that get hot again you know he's he's made some shots but if, if he can get anywhere from 40 to 50 percent field goal percentage in the remain during the remainder of the season excuse me the remainder of the playoff series that would bode very well for the Pacers in terms of him being able to shoot the three ball but once again Darren Collison Victor Oladipo these guys have to draw multiple defenders so bogey can get those open opportunities or they can get out and transition and play also, we're talking about Domas. He's done such a phenomenal job in pick and roll situations, DHOs. He's facil facilitated a lot of offense for the Pacers. I think that's one way he can be effective on the offense end of the floor. I will ask Nate McMillan about Domas Sabonis a little bit later in the program. Coming up next, we're going to talk with Kristen Ari and Quinn Bucker and also take a look back, flashback, 365 days ago. Do you remember that dunk? That's next on Fox Sports Indiana. Indiana are brought to you by Indiana Members Credit Union, keeping it simple and a proud Pacer sponsor for the eighth consecutive season. When I first came in and they yelled for me, I'm like, oh yeah, this is that time. They want me to go hard. Every time I go in that game, it's, it's, I feel like I'm, I'm playing for them and myself at the same time. 
Lance Stevenson, just one of the many reasons this is one of the toughest tickets in years. Baker's Life Fieldhouse overflowing with fans for the gold out in game three. Can the 2018 home court success continue? We shall see. Miles Turner in his third NBA season, his third playoff appearance. Miles had one of the most memorable plays of his brief career exactly one year ago, April 20th, 2017, against the Cleveland Cavaliers. Yeah, I just remember that we were we were really putting them on him at that point, and I hadn't really been doing much in that game to that point. I remember that day we were actually telling him to attack the basket, aggressive, aggressive. So I think he took a shot. He missed it. Turner aggressively looks for the shot. Short though. Got his own rebound. It just took off. It found him. A lot of frustration went into that tongue. I oh, mean, that play right there, that was a very excited play. I felt like that play showed, man, you better respect me in this league. The best reaction out of that was the bench, man. That was the most energy I've seen. You know, I stood up, and I almost went on the court and, like, kind of, like, jumped to his body. It was like the, like, when he gave to the crowd, that particular play was, like, it felt good. You know, when we're in big time games like that, that's really a moment that, you know, I knew Miles um, could step up and be that guy for us, could be that leader. You know, anytime a guy can, and do something like that, it's going to be special. That was one of the best moments, even playoff moments, basketball moments for me my entire career. The only thing that could have made that play any better if Chris Denary and Quinn Buckner were on the call. Well, the good news, we have game coverage tonight. Chris Denary, Quinn Buckner standing by courtside. Good evening, fellas. What is the vibe like down on the court? I'll tell you what, it is something special. You said it. This is one of the toughest tickets we've seen in Indianapolis to see the Pacers play in some time. And you relive the moment from Miles Turner from a year ago. This is a guy, Quinn, through the first two games of this playoff series has played very well. Well, he has played well. I mean, he's averaging about 17 points a game, which is which you would hope that would be the case. I mean, what I think about it, Chris, you can see the experience, the growth, and this is what we've all been looking for. And you look at the, how good he's shooting the ball from the perimeter. I want to see him more aggressive. When you've got a guy shooting just under 62%, you want to see him get more shots so he can set more screens, but he also has the ability to step out, knock shots. You want to see all of that in block shots from Miles Turner. Tonight is the 14th playoff game for Miles Turner. It's the 45th for Kevin Love. He's one of the younger players with the least playoff experience on this team, but he's been a part of a championship team as well. Well, he's got experience, and, and they count on him to be, if you will, the second fiddle to LeBron James. He's a guy that prefers to shoot it from the outside. As you know, before he got to the Cavs, he was an all-star player in the post as well. So he was really the premier, if you will, stretch four, and you've got to get out to him because if he's making shots, that really opens it up for LeBron James. When Indiana did what it wanted to do, at least get one on the road, now with home court advantage, pressure really shifts to you to hold serve. I definitely think that is the case for the Pacers. I think you've got to come here and hold serve. Get this first game, and you want to try to make LeBron James have to exert a lot of energy to score and just try to manage everybody else. We have plenty more coming up on our pregame show from Bankers Life Fieldhouse, where J.J. will go one-on-one -on -one with the head coach, Nate McMillan, next. We've got plenty more coming up on Fox Sports Indiana. Pacers basketball, the playoffs on Fox Sports Indiana are brought to you by your Central Indiana Chevy dealer. Choose your Chevy.com. And by Menards. Save big money at Menards for all your home improvement needs. We home Bankers Life Fieldhouse is site of games three and four in this series. Coach, after game two, you referenced some breakdowns, some things that you needed to improve on, but in the locker room, it felt like there was a quiet confidence from your guys that despite the loss, you learned a lot and you had a lot to take into games three and four. Do you like that confidence that you see it the last couple of days? Yeah, well, we've had that, I think, all season long, and uh, we should be confident. Uh, you know, we did a good job in, that, in game one. Game two, well, we felt like we beat ourselves, and, um, you know, we showed them the tape of a lot of things 
things that we didn't do in that game uh, that we needed to do. They were the aggressive team. I thought we were uh, soft in the paint and uh, didn't really bring that physicality uh, to the game. So, you know, looking at the tape, the guys saw that, and I think they feel that uh, we know we can play better and uh, we can beat this team if we play our game. So many times in this league, teams are able to come back from early deficits, but in this series, the first 12 minutes have been key. Is it more important in a series like this to get off to a good start, maybe even specifically tonight? It is important that you establish yourself uh, right from the beginning, and uh, we, uh, we uh, felt we did that. Game one, game two, uh, they basically just hit us in the mouth and uh, was downhill and, and getting everything uh, fairly easy. They were the aggressive team. Uh, so, yes, uh, we've always talked about uh, getting off to a good start, a strong finish. We need to do that tonight. LeBron was aggressive in the first quarter of Game 2. How do you counter that aggression? Well, uh, you know, a couple of his shots that were uh, contested shots and fadeaways, and if he's taking those shots, that is what we want him to do. But a couple of those were layups and uh, really no contest at the rim. We can't give that up. We got to keep the guy, uh, keep LeBron in front of us, uh, make him shoot over the top and uh, load to the basketball. He was in our paint uh, way too easy. And, uh, you know, that is what we've done a better job of is keeping the ball in front of us uh, so that we can rebound. We can stay with their three point shooters. Uh, we're going to need to do that again tonight. Feels to me like this series might be decided upon which team's role players step up. And Domas Sabonis is someone who had a lot of success in the regular season against Cleveland. Struggled a little bit offensively the first two games. Have you talked to him, and what do you need from him tonight? Well, we need him to play to play uh, his game, and uh, we need to get him more minutes. Uh, uh, you know, Domas is a big part of, of what we've been doing all season long, coming off the bench, establishing that second unit with his ball movement, his ability to uh, defend. Uh, so we need to get him on the floor, uh, and we need his physicality out on the floor. The atmosphere should be crazy. Are you worried at all about your guys being too hyped? Well, we, we talked about that. Uh, I want our guys to, to be hyped, but we, we always talk about being calm and being clear about what we want to do and being connected out there. I thought in our last game uh, we were a little too hyped and was uh, basically – playing out of control basketball uh, we need to calm that down but i don't want to take their energy or aggressiveness uh, away from them thank you coach all right thank you in the final segment of patriots live pregame we'll continue to break down get eddie gill's keys to victory on fox sports I was blessed with the gift to play this game. I was blessed with the ability to play the game. And I feel as though that that's just my personality to go out of my way to take a picture or to say hello or to sign an autograph. It's just a little thing, uh, but to them it means the world. Why not take a few minutes out to do it? And this is why you see fans all across this city loving Victor Oladipo. The Victor Oladipo fan club is overflowing. Oladipo warming up as the dominoes count down to tip off clock. Shows just over 17 minutes until Pacers and Cavs get started for real. Game three of this Eastern Conference playoff series. Oladipo averaging 27 points per game in the first two. Had that big 32 point performance then limited by foul trouble 22 in game two. Eddie, what does Indiana need from its all-star tonight? Yeah, first and foremost to stay on the floor. And I don't think that that will be a big problem. He hasn't had a situation where he's been accustomed to getting fouls early in games. He's done a really nice job, but you got to have the head of the snake on the floor. He's done, he does so much for you on both ends of the floor, but on the offensive, he's able to facilitate so much with his aggression, whether it's him scoring the ball. He does a nice job with multiple defenders on him. He moves it, can shoot it, get down transition, but then also talking about a guy who gets steals night in and night out. So you got to have him on there on the floor to be able to get some of that those points in transition. Among regular rotation players, LeBron James is first, Victor Oladipo is second in points per 48 minutes. So when we reference Oladipo, we almost have to counter with LeBron James. They not they may not match up against each other very often, but their individual play is so key to their respective teams. Yeah, but both of these guys 
drive their respective teams on both ends of the floor and, and what they do with their leadership. You, for both teams, they both have to have them on the floor. You're talking about LeBron James, the greatest player of our time right now. He does so much for this team. You know, it's funny to hear people outside of it, you know, talking about the roster head that he has now. I challenge you to look at the roster that he took to the finals when he was with the Cavs originally. You will be surprised that, that that team was able to get all the way to the finals. So once again, he drives that team. You got to slow him down first and then spray out to the supplementary players as well. He got a little help from the Kyles in game two. Kyle Korver, one for 16 from three prior to that game against the Pacers this season. But this is the Kyle Korver we saw really for much of his career against the Pacers. Uh, uh, no question. You're talking about a guy who's the epitome of finding one thing that you do great and be great at it. I mean, he's a phenomenal three-point shooter, one of the best in the history of the game. And he got loose for some really open ones, which is uncharacteristic for a Pacers team. They do a nice job defending the three-point line. You can't let him get loose for open shots. I reference that success over his entire career against the Pacers. Kyle Korver, most three-pointers made in the playoffs. Only John Starks has more hard to believe with the Bulls, the Hawks, the Cavs. Kyle Korver will play his 25th playoff game tonight against the Pacers. A lot of X's and O's, a lot of discussion about what needs to be done. Taryn Collison has some idea. Uh, we made our move. They made their move. And now it's our turn to make our move. And that's the beauty about the playoffs is every game is different. Um, you saw they came up with a different lineup, kind of worked to their advantage. So now it's our turn to, to make some adjustments if need be. So uh, it's, this, this is fun. This is exciting basketball. You know, you can't ask for anything better. This is fun. This is exciting basketball. I'm curious of your word. A lot of the Pacers have playoff experience. Do you expect anyone to have any nerves or maybe be too 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 hyped? Yeah, I, I don't anticipate them being too hyped, but I do anticipate some nerves. Nervous energy to me, I think it's great energy. I think whenever I went into a game with a little bit of butterflies, I felt good about the way I was going to be able to perform and just relax once that ball goes in the air. Much more with Eddie Gill just prior to tip off. Also halftime and Pacers live post game. We've got this entire game covered for you. Pacers and Cavs game three of this Eastern Conference first round series. Could a team effort overcome LeBron James? Lance Stevenson is ready to go. Look at that look in his eyes. Pacers Cavs tonight game three on Fox Sports Indiana.